Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Saturday, November 29th, around 9 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. A major sunspot group is turning around the limb, and things may get spicy later this week, currently flaring in the M range. Buckle up and keep calm. It's boom time. A major winter storm disrupt, disrupts travel as millions head home after Thanksgiving. And here we can see a snowy road in Sioux City, Iowa earlier today. A winter storm is creating travel headaches through a large part of the country as millions make their way home from the Thanksgiving holiday. I hope you're not one affected. But a winter storm is now headed out of Minnesota after dropping considerable snow in parts Snow totals of 6 to 10 inches were being reported in southern Minnesota, while the Twin Cities metro is expected to get 2 to 5. And snow in Minnesota brings crashes and spinouts. And I think we have some footage here. Take a look at this. Major problems on I-70 westbound, just east of Terre Haute, Indiana. And those are some of the pileups and traffic jams we were seeing unfold all day. And a winter storm warning issued for steady snow all day into Sunday morning here. And there you can see where those snow totals will be. Holy macaroni. The full forecast is coming up. J Peak Vermont smashes a 25 year old record hitting 103 inches of snow already this season. And, well, in the models, it looks like the Northeast is the big winner chicken dinner this year. It's going to be an epic season for skiing in the Northeast. Let's walk uh, the models through for you. You can see where that current system is bombing out overnight with heavy snow in Iowa, Wisconsin, um, Michigan, Indiana, and uh, Illinois. So three, six hours from now, by tomorrow morning, this baby is going to be bombing out over the Great Lakes and it's going to still be snowing on Sunday. Into Monday through the Northeast as another system right behind it. Add insult to injury here midweek. Here's Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Wow, and that's going to be a heavy snowmaker for the Northeast right there. A nor'easter here setting up for the first week of December and one right behind it. It's looking like a very active snow season uh, early in this winter. Quick look at total snowfall. We'll run it through. <coughs> Here's the next three, six, nine hours, 12. Here we are Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday when that next system comes through. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday, those nor'easters set up one after another. And so here we are, first week of December. Holy macaroni. And the models get big after that. And Al Gore is not pleased. A quick look over at TornadoHQ.com live here, and you can get a better picture of what's going on across the U.S., a massive area of snow, and you can see that cold front right in front of it cold air behind and that will all be moving east like a beast and now the full forecast we've got heavy snow from the midwest to the great lakes locally heavy rain in the western gulf coast a significant winter storm will produce a broad area of moderate to heavy snow from the midwest through the western great lakes significant snow accumulations of 6 to 12 inches and locally more than a foot and gusty winds may cause hazardous travel conditions. Thunderstorms, some severe, and showers may produce locally heavy and isolated flash flooding along the western Gulf Coast. And here we've got winter storm watches and warnings out all over the U.S. And this is where the biggest area of activity is, where we could be picking up a foot or more with some thunder snow and maybe even blizzard conditions. Seismic update. No quakes of note, normal activity worldwide. And that brings us to Worldwide Volcano News for the 29th of November. Santa Guito to 14,000 feet. Purace, 18,000 foot blast there. Ongoing volcanic ash to 15,000. 
at Raventador. Sun Gate to 22,000, Fuego to 14,000. Ibu, an eruption was reported with ash moving southeast. White Island, low level activity to 3,000, continuous but low level. And we've got Semadu, who knew now you do 15,000 foot blast there, 8,000 foot puff at Ducono, an eruption reported today at Ibu, 15,000 foot uh, reported at Raventador, Parase to 18,000, wrapping up worldwide volcano news for the day. And that brings us to space weather, where we can see flaring has been getting spicy, and we've got a large sunspot group moving around the limb. Holy macaroni. And there it is. Active region 4294, flaring into the low M levels today. Here, we've got an M 5.9 and an M 2.9. This is coming from a new region that we haven't seen yet. Some low-level geomagnetic storm activity. This is because the BZ just shifted south there, so... Could have a chance for Aurora tonight as we wait for active sunspot region 4294 to turn and face us in the coming days. Should be quite interesting, and we could be seeing some interesting flaring headed our way. Hey, hey. And don't miss the cold supermoon. Here's when you can see the last supermoon of the year. Get ready for the last supermoon of 2025. The cold moon is about to light up the night sky. Sky watchers across the world will witness a finer super, final supermoon of the year. This cold moon will shine particularly bright. For those eager to see it, the best time will be just after moonrise, when the moon appears largest on the horizon, and a phenomenon known as the moon illusion. So when is the cold moon? Well, they still aren't telling us anywhere here. Okay. Best viewing times and locations. To catch the cold moon in its full glory, timing is key. The cold moon will peak at 6.14 p.m. Eastern time on December 4th, but will remain visible through the night. According to the article, the most striking moments may occur just after moonrise, when the moon seems larger near the horizon. In New York, moonrise will occur at 3.54 p.m., while in L.A., it will rise at 424. So make sure you get out and look east. And your mind will be blown because the moon will look huge. Huge, I said. A huge moon. There it is. Let's talk Ice Age architecture. How mammoth bones reveal human ingenuity. Well, at the last maximum the peak of the last glacial period 18,000 years ago, there were no trees in many regions where humans were living. And, well, what were they going to build their huts out of? Well, bones, big ones, mammoth bones, just like this one right here. Take a look at that. Absolutely fantastic. And quite durable if you pull some hides over it. A recent article co-authored by Leiden archaeologist Wei Chu and available on the Open Research Europe repository, visits the famous Upper Paleolithic site of Meserich, where archaeologists uncovered structures made entirely of mammoth bones. Let's uh, link you to the article, and let's see if, how long it takes to pull this baby up. A revised radiocarbon chronology for the mammoth bone structures and associated features in Meserich, Ukraine. Go get it. All the links will be below. And if you haven't heard, there's been an A320 Airbus recall grounding thousands of jets worldwide. And it's because of something we've been warning about for a decade. Repairs are needed due to flight control software issues with an incident linked to solar flares affecting flight controls, while some jets may also need hardware changes. Japan's largest airline, ANA Holdings, was forced to cancel 65 flights on Saturday after a global Airbus A320 recall grounded hundreds of aircraft, highlighting the widespread disruption affecting one of the world's most common short-haul jets. And let me get to the uh, solar flaring part here. Okay, I can't find it. Okay, I got it. Airbus confirmed the problem was revealed 
after a JetBlue flight from Cancun to New York to Newark on October 30th suffered a sudden uncommanded drop in altitude, prompting an emergency landing in Tampa, Florida. Several passengers were injured, although JetBlue and the FAA have declined to comment on the recall. It all has to do with our weakening magnetosphere and our failing infrastructure. So, are we ready for a repeat of the 1859 Carrington Hodgson Solar Superstorm event? Absolutely not. In fact, if it were to happen any time now, we would be kicked right back to the Stone Age and it would be a terrifying tragedy in just a few months. What's not tragic is silver. If you bought it when we told you to at 1350 just a few years ago, well, you are loving the returns. 500% almost. Holy macaroni. Why don't you convert some of your failing 401ks into precious metals and use GoldCo, the industry leader. Request your free 2025 gold and silver kit. No obligation. And there are no penalties to convert from 1401 to precious metals. How about them apples? Rated A plus by the Better Business Bureau. Rated triple A by Business Consumer Alliance. They've helped thousands of Americans diversify and protect their retirement savings every day. And you could, well, get rich or die trying. Join us. Well, it's already over. Sorry. It was at 8 o'clock over at Magnetic Reversal News on Rumble. But most of you that know that would have already been there. 14 viewers waiting as we record the show. Violent supernova triggered at least two Earth mass extinctions and micro-lightning in the mist may have sparked life. A fascinating expose. Please support us on our Rumble channel. Follow over there and go watch the video. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. Half of you watching are unsubscribed and we need your help to grow. Just click the button and hit the bell and be well. We love each and every one of you. Be safe. And gobble, gobble. Nee, nee, nee.